Hey all! So the footage you're about to see was supposed to be three separate episodes, but when I was trying to put it together in the edit I was missing intros, there was stuff I hadn't filmed. It just wouldn't come together as three separate episodes, so I decided instead mash it all together. It's gonna be one long, slightly awkwardly edited thing, just because I'd rather get the footage out there, let you see it, than try and make it perfect or throw it all away because it didn't come together the way I wanted. So enjoy, you get an extra long episode. All right. We are now on adhesive number three. This is 3M headliner adhesive, which sounds like exactly what I've needed all along. But when I Googled for stuff early on, I didn't find anything, but I found people talking about using Super 77, so I used that. That didn't work. So then when I was Googling on like, what should I use kind of thing, like, because obviously Super 77 was wrong, they recommended the Weldwood cement stuff, the stuff in the, the blue stuff. So I tracked down some of that, I ordered it, got it in, used it, it was miserable to use, and it peeled off as well. So that was another bunch of time and money wasted. So I was trying to use the Super 77 that I had because it at least, like, stuck. Whether it's going to say stuck or not is a separate problem, but the other stuff just sprayed on, it would go, it would dry, it wouldn't stick. But this stuff's obviously, the Super 77 is obviously failing too, so I went back and googled again. And I literally, the only way I found this stuff was to Google using Super 77 for a headliner, or can I use Super, you know, something to that effect. And one of the results, there's multiple people talking about, don't use it, it's bad, use other stuff, but other stuff is always vague, um, over and over and over again. But one site was selling this stuff, 3M headliner adhesive, so I was like, holy crap, there's a 3M headliner adhesive, you know, the thing I need for headliners. So I googled it, and yeah, this stuff's everywhere. I literally went to a local auto parts store, and this was on the shelf next to the Super 77. So this is supposedly exactly what I need, but it does the internet doesn't know this exists, apparently. So I don't know. So I'm going to work on the headliner panels, because I have two I still have to cover. And then what I'm basically planning to do with the rest of this is, as things fail, I've got a couple that have already failed, obviously, but as things fail, I'm going to redo them with this, probably with new material, whatever possible. And I'm going to do all the new stuff with this and see, hopefully it'll work. I figure this has got to be the right stuff, because it's literally for what I'm making. And we're going to go from there, and hopefully that'll get me the results I need. Let's go. As far as in here, that should probably get redone, and that should probably get redone. But for right now, I've decided I'm not going to because I just, I, I don't want to. It's basically what it boils down to. These two also really need to be redone because they keep peeling back up again. But if I redo these, I need to either recut the new boards, or if I don't have enough wood for that, I need to um, peel this off, clean them, and then stick a new piece of vinyl on because they've been stuck on enough times that the vinyl and the board have a bunch of adhesive on them. And so the new adhesive won't stick because it'll be sticking to the old adhesive. But I'm moving forward. The other thing, these panels are failing by bubbling in the middle like this too. So it's, yeah, it's just been a mess all around. Alright, there we go. Um, turn the cam off, camera off when I didn't mean to, but this one is done. Came out pretty good, I think. It's got a couple of wrinkles in it, but it's basically invisible against the crushed velvet. Also, the camera was off when I did this one. I didn't realize until I was done. This one came out pretty good. The one big thing with this one that was a problem was this piece of fabric was just, just big enough to fit it. It was the last piece I had, so I had to kind of stretch it to fit, and I didn't quite stretch far enough in this corner. The fabric actually does wrap 
around, but it only wraps around as far as the vertical. It doesn't come around to the other side. So I don't know how well I can show this. But what I did was stuck another piece of fabric around that corner and then stuck this the, the headliner fabric to that so that it would have something to stick to on this edge because otherwise it would be trying to stick to the edge of the chloroplast. This tape is just to keep everything tight together until it all dries. Hopefully that'll be enough. If not, I'll recover it, whatever. So these are done. These need to dry. And then I can try installing them and hopefully they will work. I think I'm leaning now towards putting some Reflectix um, up here because I'm realizing this roof is warm. My long-term plan is to paint the roof silver. But for right now, the roof is dark, so if I put some Reflectix up in here, that'll help with heat in the van. And I haven't fixed the AC yet, so yay, let's fix the, let's help with the heat in the van. All right, and <laughs> the ceiling is in. It is not done because I've run out of screws and I cleaned out my local Lowe's last time I went, so I'm gonna have to go searching further afield because Home Depot doesn't have them and Ace doesn't have them either, but it's in enough that it's supporting itself even if it's not in properly. Um, that panel does not fit well at all at the front and at the sides, it just, it's too wide and the front edge is shaped wrong. So eventually I will probably redo that one, but that's a very eventually because I don't have enough of this to redo it. Um, I can't show you it now because I covered it over. Well, if you can just see if you see that little bit of silver in there, what that is is I missed with this screw and badly enough that I couldn't just move it over and cover the hole with the washer. So my choices were to have a big ugly mark with another screw here or what I did is that's just, it's like literally a, a section of an old um, yurt stick that's screwed to the actual correct ceiling brace. And then this is screwed into it, and then that's screwed into it. Um, there's a little bit of a gap here just because this edge is not straight. Um, I think I may be able to loosen all of the, once I get this one solidly in, this is another one of those places where I need, I need like a screw here, I need a screw here. Once I get this panel solidly in place, I think I'm going to loosen all the screws on the front one and just kind of try and force it back that tiny fraction of an inch to seal up that gap. But overall, I'm really happy with this. This is exactly as absurd as I wanted it all to look. What I'm going to do today is build the top platform for this. To do that, I got myself some of these red oak. These are actually stair treads because they were the best way to get a nice piece of red oak about the size I wanted. This is eventually going to go up there. I'm in this position where one on one side will be slightly too long and one on the other side will be slightly too short. The short, the one that's too long is easy. The short one I'm just going to have be cutting off enough that I'll have enough to just add a small piece to the end to make up for it. But what I need to do first is make a pattern because these shapes are so weird. So I'm going to cut out some cardboard and basically be taping it together as well as some whatever else to just however works best to make a pattern in here and then once i get a pattern i like i'm going to transfer it to the board cut that out fit it make sure it all goes the way i want and then i'm going to finish off the edges
trimmed out the part where I kind of beat myself up and everything because not even, nobody needs to see that. So this came out really badly. No other way to describe it. None of this came out well. When I put this in where it's quote unquote supposed to be, it does not fit properly anywhere. It's wrong over here and this cut is inconsistent. This part's okay, I guess. This is okay. I found out I welded this metal piece in wrong because it's supposed to be level with the top. It's not by a significant amount, and there's a height different across it. So this is in the wrong place and too low. So that's that's a delight to find out. But like this angle's wrong, that angle's wrong. This is all wrong. Um, this the saw got the piece of wood when I was trying to cut across here with the circular with the table saw. There's something about this piece of wood that was causing it to pinch itself, so it was grabbing the saw blade. So that's why this is as bad as it is over here. I ended up having to actually like stick a flathead screwdriver in this end to spread it out enough that it would ungrip the saw blade so that I could continue the cut, and even then it didn't cut it well at all. So this is all trash, is the only way to describe it. This is this piece of wood is unsalvageable, it is junk. And I don't know kind of where to go next because it came out so badly. I'm just afraid if I make another one, I'm just going to ruin another piece. These are $35 a pop. Um, so I really don't know where to go next with this. The, like, this height thing is not a major problem. I can put spacers on top of that metal bar and that'll be fine. That's the least of my problems. But these angles are wrong. This is all just way too huge over here. Like, I, I cannot salvage this piece of wood, not for this or anything else in the van, because it is now all wrong and cut too small to be usable anywhere else. So, yeah, I'm really not quite sure what my next step is. Okay. I have the germ of an idea of a fix for this, but what I am think I'm redoing, I'm rethinking this, I'm not going to do this like this. I realized I have some Baltic birch left over from another project. If you don't know Baltic birch plywood, this stuff's really nice to work with. Um, and if you can see, it's... This is a one, two, three, four, five, six, I think it's a seven ply, something like that. Yeah, a lot of plies. Um, and the, the good stuff, and I think this is the good stuff based on how much I paid for it, doesn't have any voids in it either. If you've ever worked with a piece of plywood and you have, like, knot holes that, where there's no plywood, they'll put those on the inner layers. These don't have that. So this stuff is super strong all the way through. So it is very strong at a much smaller thickness. The same thing in regular plywood or regular wood would not be as strong. They make furniture out of this stuff for a specific reason. Um, what I think I'm going to do... So instead of covering this whole thing, because this is lower, I'm going to make a platform of just Baltic birch that just goes to the end of here. And at that point, it'll be close to level with the wheel well. It'll be close enough to level with the wheel well that I can fake it from there because I'm going to be covering this, I'm pretty sure, in carpet. Um, I still need to make an accurate pattern. So, yeah, I now have a plan again of attack here. If it fits. Yeah, I would call that a fit. Um, it's definitely higher than this, so we're gonna have to do some shaving to sort of transition that. And it kicks out a little bit in this corner. I had to manually sort of eyeball cut this because it was a very slight pie shape. So I'm going to, have to just go in and do some cleaning there, but a little bit of time with the sander to just sort of put a slot, you know, sort of slide this down so that it transitions into that. 
and cleaning up this will be good. And then I, once this is in place, I actually can't do it when it's in place. I need to run a router around this outer edge and or a sander just to clean this corner up. But that will do the job. After my last disaster, that's a thing I'm very happy about. Nothing on this van is square to anything else. Is that going to work here? Yeah, that'll work here, I think. This the angles on this corner are very slightly different, but not enough to be a big deal. Yeah, I think that'll work too. I can just make a pattern off of that for this side. So that'll take care of that. Hey all, we're gonna get some carpet in the back of this van. All right, so the last video I did of the flooring in this, I'd gotten the transit seat in and I'd put that um, horse mat in there. It's a three quarter inch rubber horse mat. Since then, I've been basically driving around with that as the only flooring back here. Now that I've finally gotten most of the other stuff done back here, we're gonna get back to the flooring. What I did was bought a second floor mat. These things are six foot by four foot, so they don't quite perfectly fit in here. But I took this one, cut it down so it fits around everything. And then I was left with like a four and a half inch gap there. So most of that is the piece I sliced off the side of this, filled in with another bit of that and um, a little bit that I think was cutting up for this wheel well or something. That corner is not quite perfect, but that's okay because it's kind of in the corner and out of the way. I don't know how obvious it is in the video, but there's a slight slope down at the point of those because that section has the foam insulation that was under the original carpet in this van under it. But I didn't have enough to do everything here because the original van interior had a cutout for a chair there and a cutout for a chair there and a big cutout for a um, rear bench here. So I had to use the little bit that was here to basically fill in the spaces where those two captain's chair holes were. So I ended up with a shorter piece there overall, but that's okay. This is cargo area back here. It doesn't need that extra little bit of insulation. This is going to be all it's ever going to need in terms of insulation, I'm sure. But now that this is all in, I'm going to get the rug that I found and I'm going to lay that in here and start making a plan for making it fit in here. It is longer than just this cargo area. If I remember correctly, it reaches from about the end of this to about the doghouse up front. So this will probably also be the start of working on the front area of the van because I'm going to have to pull those seats to get the carpet fitted. So I might as well start doing the floor up there and installing the new seats and whatnot. But the main part of this video, even if it, I'm working on other stuff at the same time, is going to be showing getting the rug in here. Part of it's going to get wrapped around these areas, but I don't know exactly what or how until I get the rug in because I don't know how much material I've got to work with. And so there's the carpet that's going in. This is a really cheap one. It's the finest in $60 bought off Facebook Marketplace. Um, where is it? Belgian rugs <laughs> it is a belgian rug which amuses me to no end um but yeah overall it fits pretty good i was wrong it's not quite as long as i thought it's a few inches shy of the doghouse so i thought i was going to be able to run it all the way to the doghouse between the two seats and then just basically need carpet for the two front footwells that is clearly not the case especially because i was thinking about wrapping the rug a little bit in the back here since I now know it won't fit all the way to the doghouse, I think I'm going to just run the rug to the 
edge of the rear section and then put a completely separate rug in the front. But overall, I'm happy with this for what I want. I wanted a ridiculous over-the-top rug. This is exactly perfect for that. Um, a fancier, thicker, nicer one would have been cool, but the other nice thing about this is I don't care if I damage this or ruin it. It's And it's polyester, so it's going to be very hard to actually do that. So you can see about how much material I have over here. So I wished that I had enough to wrap it all the way up and over. Sadly, I don't. But what I do have enough to do is wrap it up like this so that I can put a separate strip of something at the top. I am only going to be wrapping the wheel well portion with it. This is going to get wrapped in vinyl just because I don't really have enough rug and there's no good way to transition to a separate piece across here. It's going to be much easier to wrap the rug up under the edge here, wrap it up here, wrap it up here and stick it down and then wrap this in something else and put it up over the rug and it'll actually help keep the rug in place. It's going to get cut over here so that I can lay it flat down there and what I'll do is take those two wall panels out, tuck the rug up under them and then screw them back on over it and that'll take care of that edge. I'm not going to trim it unless I absolutely have to just because there's no reason to. Uh, this side's going to get the same treatment as the other side. The only thing is over here this is going to get wrapped down like that and then secured by the mat piece that sits here so that this pattern continues over the edge. I do need to trim over the rubber a little because it sticks out slightly. It hasn't been bothering me before, but once I get the carpet on, having this protrude out will bother me. But yeah, so that's going to go up there. And then the piece that wraps here is going to wrap down into that corner to help hide all the transition and whatnot. But the big thing with this rug that's going to happen with it is this rear section between the wheel wells is going to get cut free over here and on the other side from what's wrapped up the wheel well. There's actually going to be a slight overlap there and so that this section can get rolled forward. So if I'm carrying something that will ruin this rug, I just roll the rug up and then I've got the rubber mat exposed and then I can haul gross nasty stuff. So a friend of mine is suppo was supposed to help me bind, cut and bind the rug so that it doesn't fray. They're not available. I'm impatient. So I'm just going to do it anyway. And I will just accept the consequences if it starts fraying. The fringe is going away because that's just going to get disgusting. I don't like fringe on rugs in my house because it gets gross. So in my van, it's a lost cause. Up over here, the flooring ends here. And the rug see, it just barely hits the doghouse. But I don't think it will usefully... I was hoping it would come up a little bit further. But I don't think it will. I'm not going to commit to that until I figure it out. All right, and there we go. This is, ignore the front edge, because I haven't done anything with that, but um, this is over and in. Um, the process of doing this wheel well, I did, the rug did pull and tear over here. So that's gonna be a separate repair once I figure out this corner. But I've got that tucked in. That's again, possibly gonna get tweaked. What I may do is take a little bit off the bottom of that board so that it's up a bit because right now the rug is jammed in at a really weird angle to fit under that board but for right now it'll do when I have all the material still intact to make other changes and then for this that wheel well is covered and that wheel well is covered 
as I'm sure was obvious in the video, what I did was sliced it off and then flipped it around so that there's a finished edge under here that won't fray. And then the edge that I'm going to be covering anyway um, got the more raggedy edge. These are pretty good. There's a couple wrinkles just because it's thick material trying to go around multiple curves. But overall, it looks good and it continues the pattern really well up the sides. I'm really happy with that. I'm still not sure how I'm doing the top. That rear tri sort of triangular-ish pattern panel is going to be almost certainly the red vinyl. But I'm not sure what I'm doing to go up over the top there. Um, so that's still in flux. But as it is, I like it. I cut the edge there and I cut the edge here a little bit high so that I have room to adjust it and also for it to be um, properly bound. Um, like I said, this tore over here, which is unfortunate, but I think that can also be stitched. And once the pressure is off right here, because this corner has been adjusted right, this should be able to hold together just fine. There's little wrinkles and bumps in it because it's not glued down, but it's fine. The back edge of it is wrapped around the rubber horse mat and tucked underneath. I think that'll hold it just fine, just with the weight of the mat. And um, right now it's still got the fringe on it, but I'm going to come out with a seam ripper at some point and seam rip all the fringe off. That's just not worth videoing because that is boring. So up front here, obviously I can't do anything until I pull the seats out. Now, the other thing that I have to do is here is one, and then there's the other of the two tracks for the seat. What I'm just gonna do for now, and hopefully it will be enough, is I'm gonna put a slit right through the middle of this, and I'm really hoping that that's sufficient to be able to push the seat in and through and lock it, and then if this gets bound later, I'll bind it with a proper size of the rectangle there. But I'm hoping that that's enough, because that seat will also lock the carpet down in this area. But, like, you want to talk about transformation of the area now. We've got the ceilings, we've got most of the walls done, and we've got the floor done. So, as far as surface area covered, I'm way along. So, that's pretty awesome. So, here we go. Here's my vinyl and crushed red velvet lined van. Very happy with this. It's exactly as absurd as I had hoped for. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.